All right. Good morning, everybody. This is Mr. Ainsworth again, and we're going to whip out a few more problems here in AP Precalc here. In the first part of the video, I covered numbers one through four. And remember, this is a circuit uh, training review here. So you have to find the answer to figure out which problem to go to next. So number one, the answer was the rate of change, average rate of change was three. So we had to go find the answer at three, which is this one right here. And so I called that number two solve that the answer for the rate of change is 12 so i had to go find a problem with the answer of 12 and here it is to the upper left of the screen and i call that number three and then we solved that and this was a big problem here where i had to solve a system here to figure out the quadratic equation and to evaluate the function at one which we got negative four and then of course you have to find that answer which is in the lower right of your screen and so that's number four and this is where we ended uh, our video here in the last one here. So right now, because the the answer is three halves, I got to go find that as an answer. So I'm going to go back up here, and then oh voila! Okay, see this problem here, Sarah problem, that has an answer of three halves. So three halves. So that is number five, and this is where I'm going to begin. So here here we go. All right. So Sarah's reading a very long book, 750 pages. Ooh, ooh it sounds like you're like in a IB or AP class, like this one. Oh my God. The function P of H, okay, 650 plus 40H models her place in the book, okay, P for place in the book, based upon the number of hours she has read H. So H for hours and P for place. All right, so notice this is a linear function here, okay, it's a linear function. We got the, uh, this is the rate right there. So the rate of change is equal to 40. Okay, and in this case right here, we're talking about 40 pages per hour. So 40 pages, it's a PG, 40 pages per hour. That's a rate, right? Because we're dealing with pages an hour. So it's gotta be 40 pages per hour. And that's the rate of change or the slope. And then on linear functions, okay? Again, this is linear. So let me make, make a note of that. You gotta recall all the basics of linear functions that you worked with in the past when algebra one and the y-intercept here is your starting point okay starting point so in this model here the starting page is 650 and then she's reading 40 pages per hour for however many hours so let's read on so this model is her place in the book p all right and it's based upon the number of hours she has read h so h is hours Sarah can devote at most three hours to reading today so h has got to be is got to be uh, uh you know less than or equal to three hours but the question is what's k the inequality says zero is less than or equal to h which means h is greater than or equal to zero which means time has got to be greater than or equal to zero which makes sense but we have to find k uh to show the domain of the function so what's the k where this is the domain all right and so uh let's see here so how many how many uh, hours will it take the remaining pages? So she's starting at 650. It's a 750 page book. So I'm gonna just kind of write down my thinking here. So in terms of the pages, she's on page 650. She's got to get through 750 pages. Oops. All right, so that kind of sounds like to me that she's got 100 pages left, okay? 100 pages left. Okay, so because of that, we have to use the rate to figure out how long does it take to, to read the pages. And then it, once we figure that, then we'll figure out K, which is the domain of the function here. So K here is going to be equal to the, the number of hours. So what, what we need to do is take her, uh, we need to take her the pages left, which is 100 pages. All right, she's reading at 40 pages per hour, so 40 pages per hour and if you solve this little or simplify this little uh, expression here 100 divided by 40 just use a calculator if you want or do it in your head uh, it doesn't matter so that's equal to let me see uh, 100 divided by 40 is two and a half pages divided by pages hours pages cancel out gives you hours so we get two and a half hours okay so the domain in this case all right, here is zero less than or equal to h, where that stands for hours. 
And she's only got two and a half hours left until she's done with the book, and so we're done. So the max right here is two and a half. So it's got to be less than or equal to two and a half hours. I'm sure this is a max. This is the time it takes to finish the pages. All right, time to finish 100 pages. Remember, she starts on 650 because in a linear function, that's the starting point. She's reading 40 pages per hour. So how long does it take to read 100 pages? Well, two and a half hours. So K has got to be uh, two and a half. So let me just note that here. So K says right here, K, K is 2.5 hours. So what we need to do now is we need to find that answer in the problem set. So where is it? We're on problem five, so let's find problem six. We gotta find two and a half. I'm gonna go up, see if I find it. No, it's down, so we gotta go down. Gotta scroll, keep scrolling until, oh, there we go. Here we go, so uh, we got two and a half. So this is number six right here. Okay, there we go. So now let, we gotta solve this problem next. So number six. Okay, determine average rate of change. That's a rock again. Here we go again. That's like a major theme in, in pre-calc right now. Uh, on the interval from negative one to three. So we need to take a look at, well, you know what? We could, we could do it two ways. So I'll tell you what, I'll use the definition first. So definition of a rock, we're talking about on an interval from A to B. So A is negative one is B is three. That's equal to F of B minus F of A, all divided by B minus A on the interval from one to three. So in this case, so negative one, where's negative one? So negative one is here. All right, three is, should be here. So we've got to find the function values. So f of negative one is five. So this is, excuse me, negative five. So that's f of negative one. f of three, you got to go up to the function. All right, plot it, look at the y value, and it's nine. So f of three is equal to nine. So that's the first thing you have to know, is you have to know how to evaluate a function given the graph to figure out the function values. Okay, so here we go. So let's apply the definition. So the average rate of change is equal to f of, f of, and again, you start off on the right side of the interval, so three minus f of negative one, all divided by three minus, not one, but three minus negative one. So f of three, that on the graph is nine, okay, minus f of negative one, which is negative five. Be careful there, it's not five, it's negative five. And then three minus a negative one is three. We get nine minus negative five is 14 divided by three. Why three? Why did I say three? Three minus a negative one is four. Ainsworth, I can't believe you just did that. I'm being silly here. Okay, it's getting late, I'm tired. So three minus a negative one is four. Nine minus negative five is 14 divided by four gives you seven halves. Okay, or you can say the average rate of change is just as a decimal, 3.5, okay, 3.5. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to, oh, oh before, I saw, before I go to another problem, I wanna show you the other way to do it. So I said that the average rate of change is also the slope of the secant line. So slope of the secant line, and just that's a fancy term for the line that intersects the curve twice, okay? Uh, on that interval, okay? Not in all, but on that interval. So I'm gonna draw that secant line, okay? And it's through point A and through point B. And if you draw that secant line or just the portion of the line, the secant, right here, and you find the rate of change, you should get seven and a halves. So if you do that, I'm just gonna go up. No, 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 no. Okay, that's the rise, right? Boom. And then I'm gonna run. Okay, so slope equals rise divided by run, because that's the rate of change. And in this problem, we go up, you see you got it from negative five to zero is five, and then up to nine is 14, so that's a rise of 14. And then you gotta run, you gotta go to the right from negative one to three, and guess what, that's four. And so 14 force, oops, force. Well, guess what, that's seven halves, and that's the answer that we got earlier here. So you could do it graphically or algebraic, it doesn't matter. This, the average rate of change is the slope of the secant line or the line containing the two points on the curve. 
So you could do it algebraically, like I showed you in green first, or you can simply plot the two points and then use rise over run. Um, I would suggest that you guys know how to do it both ways because then you're the complete student. All right, so that's the average rate of change, 3.5, 3.5. I got to find that in another problem, so I got to search for it. And remember, we're searching for the answers, and these are not the answers to the questions that you're working on. These are the answers that you just found. Okay, so this is not three. These aren't 3.5. Those aren't 3.5. You got to find it. So you got to keep looking for 3.5. Oh, I just found it. It's right here. Okay, so we just worked on problem number six. So this is number seven. So we label this seven. And this is why they call this the circuit. Okay. Uh, Oh, you know what? Let me see. Let me just double check something here. Did I make a mistake? One, two, let me just double check things. Three, four, five, six. Six is, six is 3.5. Hmm. Well, I think my now I'm double checking my work here. So, oh, you know, there's two 3.5s. Let me just, sorry, guys. So, Let me just double check. I'm sorry. So bear with me here. Just advance the video if you're if you need to here. So the answer to six is three and a half. So I gotta go. Okay, let's try this one. Okay, so here we go. So function is quadratic here. Let's let's try this one. Hopefully I'm doing this right. <laughs> Always running a video, man. It's just like you're thinking about the math, you're thinking about doing it right. And hopefully, I'll double check my work after this, but I, hopefully I'm doing this right. So the function is quadratic. Okay, this is a really important, so highlight that. F is quadratic, very important. You guys learn that the, uh, the second difference is constant. So as soon as I see that, okay, you know uh, that the second difference is constant. What else, what are we trying to find here? Select the values of F are so, shown. Solve F of X equals zero. The solutions are following. Oh my God. So you got to find uh, the x-intercepts here. So find x-intercepts. I don't even know what f of x is here. we got a table of values, but I don't know what the function is. But this kind of looks familiar here. Did we? Oh, my God, we did it right above it here. We know the... Let me see. Did, did I find... Let's go back to another problem. Did we work on this already? This sounds, oh my God, we did. Look at this. We know what the function is. We did this in, in number three. We know the function is x squared minus 2x minus 3. Okie dokie. All right, so I'm going to write that down. So we know that f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. We're trying to solve when f of x equal to 0, which means we set it equal to 0 and we solve. And now we got to go back to Algebra 1, and we need to either solve this by factoring or use a quadratic formula. So I would suggest, let's try factoring first. So let's try that. We're going to factor this into two binomials, so, and then we're going to set this baby equal to 0 and solve it. So I know that x times x is x squared. I know that. So x times x is equal to x squared. Okay, factors of negative 3 that multiply negative 3 and add to negative 2. Factors of negative 3 that multiply to negative 3 and that add to this middle term. I'm going to put a plus sign here. Add to negative 2. So I'm going to put a plus sign. Well, what are they? Well, 3 is prime. So it's either 1 times negative 3 or negative 1 times 3. But whatever these two numbers are, they have to, they have to, uh, 
multiply negative two. So you put one and three in there because three is prime. One's got to be negative. And if you want a negative uh, sum here, the bigger number's got to be negative. One plus negative three is negative two. So this is going to be, sorry, this is going to be x uh, plus one times x minus three. This is equal to zero now. So one of these binomials has to be zero. So you got to set both equal to zero and you got to solve them. What number plus one is zero? Well, you better know it's negative one. You're in pre-calc. And then what number minus three is zero? Well, it better be three because three minus three is zero. So these are the answers up here. It's negative one and three. Those are the x-intercepts. Okay. To advance in the circuit, find the sum of the solutions. Well, that means you simply add them. So negative one plus three is two. And then we got to find two in the circuit. Okay, so then, so this is um, the beginning here. So look at all the answers in, in yellow here. You've got to find two, and that's none of them up there. So you just got to keep on going, find two. Not there. Oh, I found it. So we just was, we just were on number seven. So this is number eight right here because the answer is two, and now we got to solve this one. All right, so let's let's give this one a shot. Okay, so it looks uh, looks like, uh, well, let's see, use the formula, this formula here, to find an expression for the slope between 3 and a nearby point 3 plus h. Okay, on the graph of x squared. Hmm. Okay, so what in the world do we do? Uh, to find the slope. So what we want to do is simplify this bad boy, okay? So I'm going to expand this. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to expand it. Okay, so if you don't know how to expand a binomial in your head, you have to take, uh, okay, so actually, whoa, let's go over here first, 3 plus h, so 3 plus h times 3 plus h. If you can't do that in your head, use FOIL or distributive property, and you get 9 plus 3h plus 3h plus h squared, and that gives you 9 plus 6h plus h squared. Okay, so that's just multiplying or distributive property. So I'm going to write it up here, 9 plus 6h plus h squared. And then you got this minus 3 squared hanging around up here. I'm talking about this. Okay, well, guess what? That is, well, that's plus 9. So minus, oh, excuse me, minus 9. Because a minus 3 squared is a minus 9. All divided by h. Okay, so I'm simplifying here. 9 minus 9 is 0, so you just get 6h plus h squared divided by h. You divide them both by h, so I'm going to do that. Okay, and then you simplify, and notice that these cancel, right? And one of the h's cancel. h squared divided by h is h, so you're going to get 6 plus h. All right, so you have to simplify. Okay, simplify and analyze, as Ainsworth always says in his videos. Okay, simplify and analyze. Now, simplify the expression in terms of h. Well, guess what? I just I just did that. It's 6 plus h. To find the instantaneous rate of change, ooh, which is the slope of the tangent line at 3. Okay, slope of tangent line, all right, at 3. By the way, we just did a little calculus in disguise right there. Okay, at Okay, this, uh, this number here, 3. Evaluate the expression, h for 0. So what you guys really don't know is you just found the limit of a function evaluated as x uh, approaches h. <laughs> That's so sweet. We'll talk about that more later in the next course. Okay, so you substitute in h equals 0, so 6. Okay, plus 0 is obviously 6. And that, my friends, is your instantaneous rate of change. So, instantaneous rate of change is 6 by evaluating. And now what we need to do is find the answer that has 6. Okay, we're on number 8, so let's find number 9. we got to find for the find an answer that has 6 in it, or find a problem that has an answer of 6. Ah, it's right here. Okay, so we were just on number... Uh, we just did number 8, now we're on number 9. Okay, and so I'm going to do one more. So this is number 9. Okay, so now on this one, okay, this is the graph of the function uh, f is shown. So you got f of x right here, which statement is describes the behavior of x. So 
Okay, so the x-axis from 0 to 10, y-axis from 0 to 6. It says, um, let's see, A, B, C, oops, can't, can't spell, D. Okay, so increasing at an increasing rate, and then if that's correct, we go to 5. Increasing at a decreasing rate, we go to 15, etc. So which one of these is correct? And they'll tell us where to go. All right, so let's, what we need to do is we got to, we have to draw some tangent lines here, so let's do that. So I'm going to pick a point on the graph, like uh, point A here, so draw the tangent line. And then what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to pick another point, let's call it uh, B. All right, I'm going to draw the tangent line. And remember, this is this is the, talks about how how fast it's increasing. And then and then C, I'm going to pick a point up here, call it C, draw the tangent line here. And so the, notice the slopes are getting more shallow okay so the first tangent line t1 versus the second one t2 versus the third one t3 you can tell the slope is decreasing it starts off at a, a big positive and then not so steep and then not so steep so the it's an increasing function but because it's getting more shallow or flatter it's it's increasing but at a decreasing rate okay Hopefully that makes sense. So these these don't apply, and it's it's going to be this one here, increasing at a decreasing rate because it's going up. Sure, it's the function's increasing here, but the the slope of the tangent lines is getting flatter, so it's at a decreasing rate. So what we want to do is go to 15. We've got to find the answer of 15 and call that number 10 because we're at number nine right now. So if we find 15, which means we've got to go up. Where'd it go? Oh, here it is, right here. Okay, so, okay, so, because it says answer is 15. So what problem were we on? We were on number nine, so this is number 10. And that's how the circuit game works. So this is number 10, and then you solve this one, get an answer, and then it'll tell you where to go. All right, this is where I'm going to end the video right now. If I get time to do some more, I'll do some more later. All right, this is Mr. Ainsworth here. We are uh, working on the Unit 1 circuit training review to get ready for your exam. So work hard. See me in the morning before school to get more tutoring or after school or at lunch three times a day other than class. And I will see you later. Take care.